Hello, and welcome to episode six of series four of the Engaging Internal Comms podcast. This is the show for employee engagers and internal communicators who like to keep up to date with all that is new in our profession. My name's Craig Smith from The Big Picture People. Well, I hope you're well. We're having a good start to the year at The Big Picture People. Very busy at the moment. We've just finished some big projects for clients and I hope your work is going well at the moment too. We are looking to recruit more guests. I think I've mentioned this on a couple of the last previous episodes. Uh, We've got guests lined up for for the rest of um, uh, this month anyway, or the next couple of months, but we're looking for for guests. Uh, And in particular, we we get a lot of guests from the United States, which is fantastic, but we're also looking to try and get some uh, diversity in terms of the guests that we get on the show. So particularly the European-based listeners, if you're interested in being on the show, I'd love to hear from you. Drop us a note at the info at thebigpicturepeople.co.uk or if you go to the uh, comments form on our landing page on on the website engagingic.com you'll see there's a place there where you can just put your name forward um thank you to everyone who has come forward by the way and uh, we are we are in the process of uh, working through speaking to, to potential guests for the future but if you're interested please let us know uh, we're, we're always looking to find out about what your work we're not just always looking for people who've got a book or a big idea well that's great we're, we're also looking for people who are doing really good day-to-day work in their organizations that we can show Share with our listeners so come on get on the show tell us all about what you're up to tell us about what you're passionate about our listeners love to to hear that so on that note coming up in the uh, next episode on the 28th of Feb- of uh, March sorry we've got an interview with Muriel Clawson from Anthill Muriel is going to be telling us all about how we can communicate more effectively with our frontline employees people who are deskless people who don't have access to the sort of technology that we've become very familiar with over the last couple of years and then in the episode after that on the 11th of April I have an interview with Tracy Maylett and for Tim Vedani and they're going to be telling us all about why we don't start what we finish from a communication perspective Um, and we're going to be looking at what we can do to help our organizations our leaders people within our organizations to to finish finish off their their commitments and what the the communications and organizational development aspects of uh, many unfinished projects that uh, I'm sure you will uh, be will resonate with you it certainly does with me in terms of some of the clients we work with but also our own uh, uh, unfinished projects as well which i think any organization has coming up in the near future we've got a number of webinars free webinars that you're more than welcome to join uh, i'm not going to go into those in detail but if you're interested in our free communications uh, web- webinars you can find them on our website which is the bigpicturepeople.co.uk and if you go to the events tab you'll see there are free webinars coming up over the next few months which you're more than welcome to sign up to so anyway that's enough of me please leave us a review if you like the show and please share any episodes that you've listened to or listened to obviously this one with anybody you think might be interested in hearing all about it anyway that's enough from me on to this episode's interview <laughs> We visited the topic of storytelling a few times in the podcast in the past. We've looked at storytelling as a an approach for commu- organizational communication for our leaders to be able to get their messages across. And we've looked at it as well in terms of how we construct stories in order to make our messages more sticky, more accessible and to have more impact on our our audience. But I also think that sometimes stories are overlooked from the perspective of how we can use them to make meaning of our own experiences in order to be able to help people to learn from what we've learned and also to be able to get our points of view and ideas across more clearly. So this is something that I've been wanting to revisit for a while now. And I'm also interested from the perspective of storytelling being something, not something that's new, but something that's been around for for thousands of years. If you go back before we had printing presses and other ways of, of communicating on a mass basis, our primary way of transferring knowledge and wisdom uh, for for many centuries, for many thousands of years, was through storytelling. So storytelling is something that we're kind of hardwired to do. And I think it's something that we naturally gravitate towards. So if we have someone in our organization who is 
good at telling stories, people will want to spend more time with them. They'll want to hear more from them. So there's definitely something going on in our brain. So I wanted to have a look at what it, that is and how we can understand that more and recognize why storytelling is so useful. But I also wanted to look at how we can use real experiences that we've had in our lives and within our organizations to be able to create meaning for employees. And again, this isn't on a, a kind of a woo-woo profound way but more about how leaders can actually get their ideas across in a way that's more compelling and more interesting and in particular how we can use stories to teach lead and inspire which is what this episode is all about I also wanted to just revisit the idea that storytelling is something that's a hard sell. If you're an internal communicator and you're advocating some work around storytelling or storytelling skills, that can be sometimes feel as though that's a bit of a, a difficult one to get across the line when budgets may be tight and we may be working with an audience where storytelling isn't naturally high on their agenda. So I wanted to talk to my guest about how we can do that. If we believe that helping our leaders to be better storytellers is something that's worth working on how we can help to be able to deliver that in an organization that may we may think is resistant so that's what we're going to be looking at into today's episode how we can use stories to teach lead and inspire within our organizations and i hope you enjoy this interview my guest today is Mark Carpenter. Mark has a passion for helping others to achieve more than their of more of their potential. He loves coaching, consulting and training in communications, leadership development, motivation, change management and marketing public public relations are all part of Mark's skill set. Mark is also the author of the best-selling book Master Storytelling: How to Turn Your Experiences into Stories that Teach, Lead and Inspire. Mark is also the creator of the Master Storytelling Workshop. When he's not creating new content, consulting, facilitating, or coaching, he's likely to be enjoying the mountains near his home in Utah and the United States, or telling stories about his grandchildren. You've, that was one of the questions I normally ask my guests. You've already answered that. You're in Utah, so uh, good, good, good morning, Mark. For you, good afternoon for me. How are you, Craig? It's great to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and uh, Utah, Utah is a is a big place. Where, where, give give us whereabouts are you uh, in Utah at the moment? Just so yeah. our American uh, our American listeners can position you exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm near the Salt Lake City area. I'm I'm in Sandy, Utah, which is a suburb of Salt Lake City, and right next to the mountains. For me, it's about a 15 minute drive to be up in the mountains where I can hike or snowshoe or just enjoy the the fresher air of the mountains. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you, you, I said there in the introduction, you telling stories about your grandchildren. Uh, how, how many grandchildren do you have, Mark? We have 11 grandchildren with one on the way. So we're, wow. we're on our way to an even dozen. Wow. That's a lot of stories you could tell about 11 grandchildren <laughs> with 12, uh, almost 12. You know, it, it is interesting how, how small children are fodder for really good stories and not just stories about what they're doing, but Stories that can have principles to to teach, lead, and inspire, which you talked about in the introduction. Mm. Uh, it's amazing the relatability that we can have to some of the things that little children say and the wisdom mm. that comes from their mouths. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that leads us nicely into to talking a little bit about your role. I, I've I, I've read read through the, your bio there. Tell us a little bit more about about your your past and how you've arrived at what you're doing now, and a little bit more about what what that is that you're doing now. Thank you, Craig. I, I started my career actually in internal communications uh, with a bank. Uh, my, my first job was producing a weekly newsletter to uh, 4,000 employees of a, of a bank. And uh, so there's a lot of storytelling involved in that to, to keep people's attention on a, on a regular newsletter that goes out. And so my background was in internal communications and then public relations and transitioned from that into teaching and, and facilitating. And so storytelling has always been a part of my life, really. I didn't really make it a conscious part until the last, oh, five or six years where I realized that this was maybe one of my superpowers was the ability <laughs> to take real life experiences and turn them into stories with a point, not just stories to entertain or stories to tell people what happened but stories with the intention to teach, lead, and inspire. Mm -hmm. And so that led me to author the, the book, Master Storytelling, with a good friend of mine, Daryl Harmon. We published that almost exactly four years ago. 
and created a workshop around that to help other people do the same thing, Mm -hmm. to identify real life experiences that they can turn into stories with the intent to teach, lead, and inspire. And so Mm -hmm. our, our goal now is to create a world of intentional storytellers that help them accomplish their goals through storytelling. Mm, mm. Excellent. And we'll look at I'll look a little bit more about how your your approach differs because storytelling is something we we've covered before. I think it's one of those things that's multifaceted. I don't think you can ever cover a topic as broad as, as and as and as and as enduring as storytelling in in one in one or even you know a handful of communi- conversations. So um, I, I'll be interested to in a in a moment we'll explore that. But just before we do that, I guess you know our audience are, are a lot of them will be. You know they will they will they will talk about telling stories quite a lot in their work. They, you know, it's a shorthand for you know writing, creating a narrative, and 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 I guess from my perspective, and I'd be interested to get your perspective. Sometimes it's not always storytelling; it's just writing some really good copy and calling it a story. Um, t- tell us a little bit more about what what why stories are so valuable and a little bit about what's maybe going on in our brains when we when we listen to and tell stories you, you mentioned there and when we when we were kicking off about your your grandchildren and and how helping them to construct stories and using them to construct stories and, and listening to what they say how they tell stories is is, is something quite profound but t- tell us a little bit more about about the science of of bre- of of, um, of storytelling and why it is so enduring but also what's going on in our brains when when we're in that sort of storytelling listening or, or telling mode yeah there's there, there's so much in what you just said Craig <laughs> it, it, it's wonderful to, to unpack it all because when I think of storytelling now, I don't think of it as just sharing an experience. And I think that's what a lot of people do think of. Mm. They think, well, I'll just tell the story of what happened to me at at work today or what happened over my weekend with my grandchildren or or things like that. And that's just really relating an experience. Storytelling is is more of a craft. It's crafting it with specific intent because there's been a lot of brain research around what happens to us as we listen to a well-told story. Mm as opposed to just listening to an experience. Uh, One of the people that I pull from a lot is Dr. Paul Zak uh, at Claremont Graduate University. And Mm. he he has this wonderful title of neuroeconomist. So he's kind of blending neuroscience with economics uh, Mm. in terms of the decisions that we make, what's happening in our brains as we make these decisions. And one of the things that he's done is identify three chemical changes that happen inside of our brains when we hear a well-told story Mm. Uh, and the three chemicals are oxytocin, cortisol, and and dopamine. Dopamine is actually a neurotransmitter more than a, than a chemical. But when we listen to a well-told story that has relatable characters, our brain increases in uh, with oxytocin Mm. and oxytocin. If you're familiar with that is, is known as the trust hormone. Mm. So if you're telling a well-told story, the people who are listening to you are going to trust you more. Mm. They're going to be able to relate to you. They're going to connect to what you're saying. They're going to be able to make it part of their own lives or their own experience because they're going to be able to see themselves in that story. Mm. Now, we also, uh, at least Dr. Zach has has identified that there's an increase in cortisol in our brains when we hear a well-told story. Mm. Cortisol comes in when we see a, a worthwhile goal at risk, when we see somebody trying to accomplish something. And we can relate to it because we've tried to accomplish something similar. or We've tried to overcome difficult challenges in the past. Mm. Cortisol has the effect of focusing the listener's attention. So they're paying more attention to what you're saying, and they're actually going to remember it better because of that increase in cortisol. Mm. And then the dopamine comes in when you give them a satisfactory ending, Mm. when you give them something to think about as they're going forward. Uh, dopamine is that little sense of satisfaction we get. We get it when we level up in a game or when we uh, check something off of our to-do list, you get a Mm. little bit of an increase of dopamine. So it gives you that satisfaction. Mm. And you Mm. get that at the end of a well-told story to say, ooh, yeah, I can relate to that. I can, uh, yeah, I can see the, the lesson that's there and how that change could be helpful for me. Mm. So th- th- those are three of the major things that happen with a well-told story as opposed to just relating an experience. Mm. Mm. 
and I guess that's why it, it is as, as enduring. I say, you, you know, I didn't use that word um, as a throwaway comment. I mean, I, I know from my own very, very modest research, it, it, the fact that for the vast majority of our existence as, as human species, we've not we've relied on storytelling primarily as the way of, of transferring knowledge through the generations because we didn't have you know, Twitter and iPads and iPhones. So we've had to, you, we, we, we only recent phenomena. I'm, 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 I'm being a little bit, uh, uh contrived there, but, but uh, it's only probably only over the last sort of few centuries that we've been able to share stories in written format and pass them down with primarily it was spoken word. So being good at telling stories, I guess was essential to survival, um, and, and being able to be successful uh, for the, and that's why we're kind of hardwired to do it. That's the way I've, I've always uh, rationalized it. Would you agree with that, Mark? A- absolutely. This is the part of our evolution. It's part of our evolutionary history mm. that this is how we communicate to each other. So think about, you know, we'll, we'll go back to ancient man, you know, well before recorded history, and if I'm trying to assess, is this person who's coming toward me a friend or a foe? Mm. Well, a lot of the ways we're going to assess that is what story do they tell? You know, I'm going to say, who, who are you? And they start giving me a background and they start saying, oh, I know this person that you know. Well, all of a sudden, I've got an increase of oxytocin in my brain because it's like, oh, you, you're you one of me mm. because you know people that I know. And that's going to help me trust that person. Mm. Or if they don't know people that I know, or they know someone who was my enemy, all of a sudden that's going to turn me the opposite direction. And I'm going to say, this person is not a friend, they're a foe. Mm. And so this is how we relate to each other and how we connect to each other uh, just on a biological level. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. So you mentioned, you mentioned in your, um, your, you know, as you as you talked about your own approach to storytelling, that it is different. And and, and again, I'd like to explore that because again, our listeners will probably be familiar with you know the idea of how to construct stories, the idea of you know the kind of heroes and villains, and 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 you know you know kind of the challenges. And and the, I, I'm not an expert in in the, those different constructs, but we're probably familiar with them. But but I, I guess what what you something you said, which I think is really important, is that you're using stories based on real experience rather than creating fables or, 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 you know, imaginary stories. Imagine if this was such and such, you, you're, you're getting people to actually think of something that's happened to them and turn that into a story that, that then creates, uh, all of those kind of reactions that we, we've just been talking about. Can you, could you just go into that a little bit more detail, please, Mark? Yeah. And you, you mentioned in some of your opening comments that we could do multiple different podcast episodes <laughs> on all the different types of stories that we can tell. And you're spot on with that. And there's a there's a place for business fables and, you know, what if types of stories. But the stories that we focus on are real life experiences because we feel like they're most relatable. Hmm. And the mistake that sometimes people may make is to say, well, let me just relate this experience People hear the experience and they go, okay, that's that's good, but we want to be more intentional about that. What's the lesson we learn from that experience? Because that's really where people connect. If they mm-hmm. can connect in to say, I can see myself in that experience, and I, if I'm really smart, I'm going to learn from your experience and the lesson that you learned from that instead of having to experience it myself. Mm-hmm. I can use your experience as a vicarious experience for myself to help me be better in the area that you're trying to teach me in. Hmm. And so we, we see the real life experiences the, as the most relatable types of stories that you can tell if they're structured well to help people to learn new things, to take action, to take the next step forward. Uh, sometimes I, I, I talk about uh, culture, hmm. about building culture within organizations. A lot of times people think, well, culture is our mission statement. It's the, it's the words we put up on the wall. Mm. Well, really culture is the behaviors in the hall more than the words on the wall. Yeah. And so what are the behaviors you want people to enact and what's the real life example of that, that I can relate to you in a story that's going to lead people to act in different ways, much more so than saying, here are the words that we need to live by. Mm. Mm. And and is it is it a case that any any experience can be turned into a story, or does it have to have does it have to meet certain criteria to be story worthy? You know, if I was to tell you that I've just walked up to the shop and I saw a guy walking his dog and he stepped over the 
pavement to let me pass you know i i again i'm being kind of a little bit kind of uh, uh controversial is it you can turn any experience or does it have to be an element of something that's happened within that story that you can then turn it into to something that that has that you know profound nature to it i'll tie that back to the conversation we had about the brain chemistry yeah you have to have the elements in a story that are going to prompt that brain chemistry in people right Okay. When when I talk to people, one of the, one of the things that I get from people a lot is, well, nothing ever happens to me. I don't I don't have experiences that could be turned into good stories because nothing ever happens to me. Mm. And I think that that's that's a little bit of a lie. It's a little bit of an excuse mm. that people are making for for looking for good experiences that they can turn into stories to teach, lead, and inspire. Uh, the, the thing I always point people to is what experiences have you had that give you an emotional reaction. Mm. And so any experience that you've had where you've had some kind of an emotional reaction to it, there's probably a story there that you could teach a lesson from. Okay. And it, and it, and it doesn't have to even be huge emotions. It can be a little irritation. It can even be a little bit of joy or a little bit of happiness. Mm. Uh, it, you, you mentioned in your, in your example that you're sharing, you know, somebody you know, lets you pass on the sidewalk. Well, mm. Even that could be turned into a story to teach a principle yeah. that small kindnesses actually go a long way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, th- so there could be something there if you had an emotional reaction to it. If you didn't, if it was just like me, it was just part of the day. Yeah. Then there's probably not a story there. Yeah. But yeah. anytime you have an emotional reaction to an experience, take note of that. Yeah. And then think about what's the lesson that can come from that experience. And I was going to say, so it doesn't have to be that you've you've had something happen to you. You've had chance to reflect on it, and you've dwelt on it, and been over it and over it, and then you've come to some sort of epiphany or a conclusion. You, you, it doesn't have to that that might be part of the creating the story from it, or is, or is that the case? Yeah, I, I think that you're right. I think people mm. sometimes think, well, in order for it to be a story to teach, lead, and inspire, it has to be some huge monumental mm. thing. <laughs> I have to have like gone to the moon or something like that. Mm. And and it's not the case. I, I, mm. Let me let me give you just a quick example. Yeah, we've, we've been talking a little bit about my grandchildren in the introduction. We were watching um, uh, two of our grandchildren and, who are twins. They're five year old twins, and their little sister who's two. And I was trying to find the little sister's sock. And I said to one of the five-year-old twins, do do you know where your sister's sock is? She looked at me with these big blue innocent eyes and she thought about it for a minute. And she Mm. said, I know a lot of things, but I don't know that. And then she just (laughs) turned around and went on with what she did. Now, that was a funny experience in the moment. And as I got thinking about it, I thought, wow, what wisdom from children. Yeah, Yeah. Because a lot of times as adults, we get asked things yeah, and we don't know the answer, but we want to make something up because we don't want to look bad. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's so much better, even as an adult to say, I know a lot of things. I don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And so even that simple little experience, there's a, there's a business lesson embedded within it. If we're looking for the lesson that's there. Yeah, Exactly exactly i love that story it's it's a great it's a great uh, like you say wisdom of uh wisdom of children i remember listening we we, this is one of our you know one of the the stories you have of your own children when they're growing up and one of the funny stories i don't think there's anything profound from this but i remember um one of our funny stories is, is my my son is uh he's just two two just two over two years older than my sorry three three years older than my my daughter so three years between them and when my daughter was was a little baby we uh, around christmas we overheard my son leaning into her cot saying uh, what do you want for christmas amy eyebrows um because you know with little children <laughs> and we just we my wife and i were just absolutely creased up because you know for him that was like a kind of really fair question to ask him <laughs> just like not realizing that babies don't generally have eyebrows or a lot of them don't anyway so anyway but yeah but that was his logic and uh, he still gets that he's 20 24 now so he still gets that to this day t- told back to him but um and, but yeah, and, and even you, though we don't know what the lesson is right <laughs> off the top of my head, there could be a lesson within that story. Absolutely. And yeah. so, so you want to you want to get in the practice of capturing those kind of moments mm. because the story may come out of them at some future point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But even yeah. just those little moments make a difference. You you talked about how you could relate to the story I told of, of my granddaughter. Yeah. And think about the chemicals that we just talked about. 
Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about this little five-year-old with her innocent face and her big blue eyes. And you're all seeing that as you listen to that story in your mind. You're making the connection. You've seen a face like that. You've got yeah. that picture in your head. And when I talk about I'm trying to find the sock, that's not a huge, big goal that I'm trying to accomplish, no, but it no. is something important in the moment. Yeah. And then when she makes the comment, the little funny offhand comment about, I know a lot of things, I don't know that, we get a little increase of dopamine because that because of the humor that's in that. Yeah. We can yeah. relate to that. And then it comes back again to the story, the lesson that we learn from that story. And you can go, ah, and you have this moment. Now that's going to stick with you. Yeah. And it's a yeah. simple little story, but those thing ha things have stickiness for us and, and for our brains. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've, we've talked there about some personal examples and they're really good. I think, you know, in terms of relating to the, the concepts so, uh, without kind of disclosing any, any, um, anything that, that obviously would, would be, uh, traceable or, or would would be identifiable where it'd come from it'd be really good maybe if we could if you could maybe talk us through a little kind of a, a story a, a story of when you've worked with someone and, and in a kind of maybe in a business context um where we can you know where we can kind of find a, a story that they had within them that they didn't realize was there and you you've helped sort of extract it from them or for them to extract it from themselves in order to to teach um, lead and inspire, as, as you say. So, so it'd be, it'd be good if we could maybe work up at least, you know, one of those, one example of that, Mark, just so we can kind of see how it works in practice, if that's okay. Yeah, my my biggest problem is narrowing it down to one example. Uh, <laughs> in, in that I can situation. imagine. But yeah. uh, honestly, one of my favorites was fairly early on as we were teaching people our concepts around storytelling, and I worked with a large financial services uh, institution. And I was at a retreat with their, their senior leadership. So this is 40 people that are at the top of the banking industry. And think about that audience. And I'm coming in to tell them that they should tell stories. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you, you chuckled We've immediately with that. Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah, I've, can, I've been there. You can see how this <laughs> may be a little bit of a tough audience. And I was seeing the looks on their faces <laughs> that was saying, oh, please. Seriously, are, are we spending time on this topic? Mm. So I, I, I was a little worried about where this was going to go. <laughs> we got to the point that after I taught them about the importance of stories and the structure of stories, they said, now we're going to do an activity where you're going to huddle up with the other members of your division that are here. Mm. Mm. And I want you to come up with one experience that you could share that demonstrates how your division is contributing to the bigger picture goals of the organization uh -huh. so, so that you can share with us an example. And, and you're going to stand up and you're going to tell that as a story. You're going to pick somebody from your group. They're going to stand up and they're going to deliver that as a story. And I was a little worried that I was going to get pushback, but they jumped right into it. Uh -huh. And I, I gave them a half an hour to work on that. They identified their person that was going to stand up and tell the story. Each of them stood up and told their stories. It was so interesting to see the reactions of the people in the room. They were saying things like, I never know you were doing that. I, 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 I never knew that, that your division was, was contributing in that way to the goal. That, that, that's exactly what we're trying to do as well. Yeah. And so there was so much relatability that was, that was going on there. We, we got to the end of everybody sharing their division story. And one of the people said, can we do this again? And I said, do you mean another day? And they said, no, no, no. We want to do it again now. We have more stories we want to share. Yeah. And, and so immediately they could see the connections that they were making with those stories. When we got to the end of the second round of it, I, uh, I said to them, what did you learn from this experience? And one of the senior leaders raised his hand and said, I learned that stories are infinitely more engaging than data. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's a great learning point for yeah. this audience to take away. I, I heard from the people that had invited me to do this uh, several months later. They said that we've got two executives that start every meeting with, let me tell you the story of why we're here. Yeah. And they really embraced that as a way to set the tone and set the stage so that we could all work together on a specific problem. Yeah. That's one of my favorite success stories in terms of how storytelling can have an impact on the organization and can get people working more effectively together. 
Yeah, and I guess that's one of the one of the concerns. And I, I, I sort of final question I'll ask you shortly is is around how we can kind of embed this in our organizations. But I guess that's one of the I think because because our 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 approach uh, for, for communications is is different. And I think one of the things that sometimes people find a little bit they're a little bit apprehensive about bringing it in because they're worried about that reaction. You know that kind of um, does not compute kind of mentality that some, sometimes you you often you over overplay in your own mind to think people are, are 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 not creative and playful and want to to do something that's different and innovative and and therefore you all you often stick to what you've always done and i think you know i can i can take complete that's why i chuckled at the beginning when you you kind of you talked about that is you know you kind of think you, you just imagine you're going to walk into this room of boffins who are you know kind of their eyes sort of square from looking at spreadsheets for so long and and you're going to kind of stare at them and, and tell them we're going to kind of visualize your strategy or we're going to help you to tell stories and you kind of think you know the tumbleweed's going to blow across and i'm going to stand there and they're going to kind of like just be staring at me with their mouth open but but actually when you go in there and you try it it, it, it it's often they're kind of relieved that thank goodness for that it's not the same same old stuff we always do or it's another you know rehashed um you know way of doing something or leading it, it, it's it's something that truly is transformational like that and i think it's it's wonderful to see so um yeah, yeah you're, and, you're, and, you're right on with that craig and, and <laughs> it, we, we work with a lot of emerging leaders mm. who feel like okay i'm in a leadership role now i have to do serious leadership things yeah. so when i want to get people to do things i should show them charts and graphs and spreadsheets yeah and and think about how inspiring charts and graphs and spreadsheets yeah 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 not yeah, no, and, and exactly. so we're trying to get them beyond that that's one of the reasons i really like telling that story is because it illustrates that point that you just identified yeah that there's there's great power in storytelling as a serious leadership tool mm. it, it's not light it's not fluffy it, it is part of your leadership tool belt mm. that you should be using yeah and I think if any anybody, again, I I, I, agree, I totally agree with you. I think if anybody is serious about being a good leader, watch good leaders in action and watch what they do. And I can guarantee a significant portion of what they do that makes them great leaders is that they will be able to use stories. Um, and, and some of them may not even realize they're doing it because it's so natural to them. They're using stories to to take you with them. And you know, I work for a big American-owned multinational and and one of the leadership capabilities you had to demonstrate was taking people with you. And I don't think there's any better way of taking people with you than to invite them into a story and, and, and take them on that journey with you. And as you say, come out the other end, having reflected and, and be able to think differently and do things differently. So absolutely. It's not a, a kind of um, nice to have it. It's an essential, I think. Yeah. And, and your, your comment about taking people with you just sends me back to, Dr. Zach's brain research. Yes. Now, yes. We, now we know why it takes us with, yes. with or it takes people with us mm. because we are connecting to their brains in a way that you don't get that connection in other means. You, no. you definitely don't get that connections with charts and graphs. No, you, you, no. You get that connection through storytelling. Absolutely. So I, I guess just, just this sort of thinking, you know, sort of bringing things to a conclusion, we, We've got a lot of people who listen to this podcast who are, are, are you know, relatively senior in internal comms. You've got an internal comms background. Um, people who are working, working their way, you know, through through their their career in internal comms, but also peripheral areas. Um, you know, em employee engagement where organisations have that that sort of um, differentiated structure, and also HR and organisational development and. Uh, for, for some people, I, I guess it's over the particularly over the last few years, as we've seen more and more of, more and more digital tools become available. It's a little bit like where do I start? It's like when a, a, a menu in a restaurant that's on about four hundred pages is to well, where do I start? What do I what do I want? And and they may have storytelling on their on their would like to try list, but don't really know where to get started. So, what are some practical tips to say? And it may be you know, they're already doing it and they just need to realize they're doing it. But what, what are some practical ways that someone could get started to think, actually, I want to be more conscious and more deliberate about either my own practice or helping our leaders to be better storytellers and to use some of the approaches that you've talked about today, Mark? What are your thoughts on that? Well, you, you just gave my first one, uh, <laughs> which is just be, be aware of it. Be more conscious mm. of it. 
Mm. And, and be conscious of those moments, like I, I talked about before, where you have an emotional reaction to something. Mm. And just take note of that. Mm. I have a, a little note section in my iPad that's called Stories for Someday. And okay. I will just jot things down that happen to me. And I go, there's, there's a lesson in there. I'm not even sure what it is right now. Mm. But I'm going to take note of it so that I've got it captured. I'm not going to try to hold that in my brain. I'm going to, I'm going to put it someplace that I can come back to it. Mm. So the first step is really just being aware of those experiences in your life that could be great teaching moments. Mm. Uh, the second part, and, and we don't have time to get into it fully today, but is just learn the structure. Learn how you take those experiences into not just sharing an experience, but actually telling it as a story. Mm, There's mm. a simple structure that we teach that helps people to do that mm. and to just really organize their thoughts in a way that enhances that brain chemistry that we were talking about mm, earlier. Mm, mm. And then the other thing is just practice it. Yeah, You, you, you do not get better at something by thinking about it. Mm. You, you have to do it. And any skill that you have, you have gone through a stage where you decided, yes, I want to do this. I've got to learn how, and then I've got to get some coaching and some feedback on how to do it. And then it's practice, practice, adjust, adjust, practice, mm. practice, adjust, adjust. And that's how you get better at any skill, storytelling included. Mm. Mm, absolutely, I think very, very wise words indeed. And and in terms of in terms of again, just thinking this through from from my, from an audience perspective, I guess in my mind I've been thinking of kind of individual fireside, you know, nominally fireside conversation or fireside storytelling. Does this scale up? So if I was if I'm a I, I'm writing, you know, I'm writing something for a company newsletter or, or something online and, and i and i i'm sitting with a you know a kind of a, a senior leader a vp and and helping him or her with that does that then scale up and and into you know that i can help them craft that so it could be told in a kind of more more in a more broadcast way or does it need that element of kind of human contact i i, I guess that's um yeah yeah so so i hope you hope it makes sense uh in terms of scaling up yeah 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 no i i no, i i i hear what you're saying and and and, and yeah absolutely it does scale and it, it, you talked earlier about you know we we used to tell stories sitting around the 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 fire the the, mm. the great big fire the community fire that kind of kept mm. us all safe and warm and it's transitioned today into all the different tools that we have. We, you know, TikTok and and all the other apps and things that are out there mm. and standing on a stage in front of hundreds of, of people. And it doesn't really matter what tool or what venue you're in. What matters is that you understand the structure and the process for storytelling. That's mm. going to translate in the way you write your blog posts it's going to translate into the way you stand in front of a company and, and share your message. Mm. It's going to translate into when you interview candidates for jobs, how do you really help them understand what the company is about? Mm. So it does, it translates it for, for large audiences, for video, for audio, for print, whatever the, the vehicle is that's carrying it, the structure is going to be the same. Yeah, and it's and, it, and it's going to work, and it's going to be useful in connecting people to you and to your organization and to the goals that you want to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, and I guess having that fundamental premise of it needs to teach, lead, and inspire is is, is a key part of that as well. Right on. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, I guess that that's going to leave our, a few of our guests thinking. Okay, I want to find out more. So. <laughs> um, Rather conveniently, we've got your 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 LinkedIn profile, which we're going to put into the show notes. We've also got uh, your Facebook. I haven't had a look at your Facebook uh, page. Is that it, it, what, what's what we what are, what are we going to see if we we visit your Facebook page, Mark? We we typically put out some little tips around storytelling. Yeah, storytelling. We'll, we'll put I'll I'll put stories there. Actually, I, I write the stories or I tell the stories on on LinkedIn, and then I'll put the the connection to it on on sure. Facebook. So that, okay, so yeah. that people can get to it. But I try to put out a, a story a week on on LinkedIn just right. to, to to prove the point and to kind of put my my time where my mouth is, if not my money where my <laughs> mouth is. Yeah. Uh, to, when I tell people, yeah, there's there's things that happen to you every week that could be turned into great stories. 
Well, I want yeah. to prove that point by putting my stories out there on a regular basis. Yeah. I would also encourage people to, to go to our website. We have some free resources on our website. Sure. Uh, you can get the first chapter of our book free there. Uh, you can download a little tool that we call the Story Catcher, uh, which kind of guides you through looking for those experiences and capturing them, translating them into uh, real life experiences. And our website address is master-storytelling.com. you got to get that little dash. you got to get a hyphen in. Storytelling yeah. uh, to, to get to the right place. But we have some resources there. Uh, we'll we'll eventually have this podcast up, this episode uploaded to our website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll start there and, yeah. and, and find the tips there. And if there are things that I can do for you, if there's things that I can help you with, don't hesitate to reach out brilliant well we'll put that we'll put that link in we've got your youtube channel as well so we'll put the link in there to your youtube channel as well so that's fantastic and very very generous mark thank you so much um i've taken a lot from that it, it, it was I, I did know a little bit about the brain chemistry but not in as much detail as you shared with us there so i think that really again it, it kind of joins the dots in terms of helping to understand why it is so powerful and i really like your approach which takes real experiences and i love that idea of i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do that I'm, i've got my i've got my ipad and where i keep all my notes i'm now going to set up a folder with stories for the future and then i'm probably going to have to contact you to say right i've got all these stories <laughs> what do i do with them um <laughs> and that's the next step isn't it <laughs> but craig i love i love that i've prompted some action already and i hope that i'm prompting some action with your listeners as well yes and yeah, that's what we want to do we yes. want to we want to create a world of intentional storytellers people that are taking their experiences and crafting them into stories that'll teach, lead, and inspire. And th that's what's gonna help them accomplish their goals. And if we can move a little bit toward that with this podcast, that makes me a happy man. That's fantastic. No, I, I, I absolutely, Mark. If we can use stories for a force for good, um, then absolutely. And uh, I think that would be wonderful. So look, that's been absolutely brilliant, Mark. Thank you so much. I'll let you go back to your view of the uh, of, of the of the mountains around Utah and uh, you're, you're thinking of your stories of your 11 grandchildren and uh, and and uh, and and wish you the best for, for the rest of the day and the rest of this week. And thank you on behalf of our listeners for your your sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. And um, and I'm sure there'll be a few people getting in touch with you to find out a little bit more about about how you could uh, maybe help them as well. Thanks so much, Craig. I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Engaging Internal Comms podcast. If you've got any ideas for episodes you'd like us to cover in future, you can email us at info at thebigpicturepeople.co.uk or you can use the feedback form at engagingic.com. If you're not already subscribed to the show via your podcast platform, please do so. And if you could leave a review for us, that would be absolutely fantastic. We have links to other episodes at engagingic.com. All of our previous episodes are available there. And if you're interested in our visual communication services, our big pictures, our learning maps, our explainer videos, and also our live graphic recording, please get in touch with us again at info at thebigpicturepeople.co.uk. Thank you.